and then no one does anything. Um, it made me think um, in relation to starting a group like sort of the Kemet that someone has to be the, the kind of leader of it, the person that drives it forward. Um, maybe I should have applied that to Zedi, but I, in some way I like the, the, the poeticness of just um, killing the thing that you love without it actually dying. <laughs> killing the thing that you love without it actually dying sounds like the title of a composition that you were meant to write. <laughs> so get that in mind. Um, but there's, there's, a, there's a more serious point, which is you talk about leaders and leadership. Yeah. So you are a leader, but you've also carried on being a sideman as well and contributing to a vast range of projects. Is that important to you? Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm a, a leader in my band because someone's got to be the leader. And we've seen what happens when no one's a leader with something like Zedu. Mm -hmm. um, but I just like, I like playing music. I like playing with different people. Uh, and that's all it is. It's, it's not a conscious decision to be a side man or to be a leader. Mm. Obviously, there may become a point when there's not enough time to maybe do projects where I'm a side man. But if there's a, a combination of musicians that I like playing with, then that's what that's all there is to it. You know, I like playing music. And in the residency scene in, in general, do, do you find that there is a, a big difference between the space that you're in as a composer and the space that you're in as an improviser? I mean, we've got the improvised night here tonight, as it were, and then we've also had the, the composed uh, composed interpretations of counting the folk tunes and definitely composed elements in the residency. Do you see a difference between the two, or, they, or are they part of a continuum? Um, I guess they're part of a continuum, like you have these whole manifestations of the stuff that happens in my head. Um, but when you've got, I guess, composed music on a music stand, you've got to worry about like the sheets falling on the floor. You've got to worry about maybe something getting in your eye and you not seeing the music and missing a spot. There's lots of like practical concerns like like that. I mean, there's also things like um, it's it's kind of m making a, reflecting a thing that's performed already. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if I've written a piece or conceived a piece. Um, it's, I know what the end result is. And the There's a things. statement that's already been made. Yeah, and they're trying to polish that statement and present it in the most um, elegant way, the most true way to what there is in my day, and maybe kind of even supersede that and rise it above what we can imagine. But essentially, the thing that it is is already formed. Whereas with improvisation, like we don't know what's, what's formed, we're actually creating that, that form structure on the spot. Do you still think about your, your training in classical clarinet when you were much younger? I mean, before, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, you went into the jazz world, you were very much in the classical world. Yeah, I mean, I did a, a four-year degree at the conservatoire in classical clarinet. Um, not that I wanted to be an orchestral player, but I liked playing the clarinet. Uh, and that was the logical thing to do if you want to play that instrument or learn how to play that instrument to get the tuition from you know, the best players in the world. You know, I did that course. And while I was doing that, I was still a part of groups like the Tomorrow's Warriors, still went to jam sessions, learning about jazz. Um, for me, it's, it's not a, an issue of you, you do one thing, therefore you must be, you know, the logical extension of it. You're just defined by that one thing, right? Yeah, it's just training. Yeah. 